Well, everyone, it is 4.30 in the morning and today is the day that we leave South America. And while we are super sad to be leaving this wonderful continent, we are also really excited because today we start our journey to India. As you can imagine, traveling from Colombia to India is a long journey and we're gonna take you along with us. But to make things a bit more exciting for you guys, we decided to tell you a little bit more about our story. Heading over to India is actually what we consider to be like the fourth phase of our travels. So we thought we would take the opportunity to catch you up on the first three phases because so many of you guys have joined us since our time here in South America. But first, we have got a flight to check in for. So let's go. Gotcha. All right, we have our final Colombian coffee. We're so sad to be saying goodbye to Colombian so coffee. Sad. <laughs> but it gives us a chance to sit down, share this with you, and tell you a little bit about our story. I think I would say it starts in 2011. When we went on our first trip together, I really caught the travel bug. We spent a couple months in Australia, New Zealand, and just like fell in love with being somewhere new. So fast forward a handful of years. In 2017, we took a trip, and that was the trip where we were like, wow, we like need to travel long term. We went to Asia, we were there for like a month. Everyone around us was there for like six months, 12 months, two years, and we're like, how do we do this? We took four weeks of holiday from work, and we're like, how do we get more holidays? It was amazing. So in 2017, I think the idea of full-time travel really like took root for us. Mm -hmm. And then in 2018, we went really hard with like saving and planning, and our, our life just felt consumed by this idea of full-time travel. And that took us all the way to January 2020, when we finally booked our first and only flight was actually to Bogota. To here, to Bogota. Literally right here where we are right now. It was the only flight scheduled for June 2020. Obviously, that flight got canceled. <laughs> so June 2020 flight to Bogota did not happen. No so, one's travel plans really worked out well that year. No. So we just hunkered down and we waited and we waited and we waited and we waited until we had a decent window that we felt like we could with some degree of certainty, probably leave Canada. But before we left, we of course had to do things like quit our jobs and like put all of our stuff into storage and hand our dog off to my sister and her husband to take care of her for us. And so finally the date came, March 5th, 2021, where we decided to take that leap and get on that plane, a one-way ticket to Nepal. It was crazy when I look back at it because our original trip in 2020, it was so well planned, so thought out, every week booked at a certain <laughs> country. But when we finally left to Nepal in March, we had no idea no. what we were doing, where we were going. We had five nights booked in Kathmandu, and that was it. That yeah. was all of it. But it turned out that having no plans in Nepal was exactly what we needed to discover slow travel, which apparently we absolutely love. <laughs> <laughs> and we had some incredible adventures in Nepal as a result. And we will share those with you in a moment. But for now, we've actually got to board a flight to Mexico, which is the first leg of our journey all the way to India. And just like that, we are wrapping up seven months in South America. It's been amazing here, but I know there's still more to see, so yeah. I have a feeling we'll be back, we'll one, be back day. one day. So we landed in Mexico, we're in Cancun. We're actually gonna be here for two nights. And the reason why we have a stop over here instead of going direct to India is that it was actually a lot cheaper to fly from Colombia to Mexico, stay in Mexico a couple of days, and then go from Mexico to India. So we got a little bit of time here. We're gonna grab some food because we are so hungry. And then we'll tell you a little bit more about our story. It is 2 p.m. and we had breakfast at 3.30 a.m. this morning. We're very hungry. We are finally fed and like have a few brain cells again so we can talk to you for a minute. Phase one of our travels for us was really characterized by super, super slow travel. And the reason for that is because the world was still pretty closed. It was, there was a lot of travel restrictions in place. So it was just, it was easier to move a lot slowly. For the first six months, we actually just hit two different countries. So the first stop was Nepal, like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. And that was just like a really nice inauguration to slow travel because we really had no plans. We were yeah. in Kathmandu. Yeah. We had only read a few things about Nepal, but all we knew <laughs> is that Everest Base Camp was there. So we hiked Everest Base Camp, spent lots of time in the mountains, just like explored some cities and some small towns. Worked on a farm for a little bit too. Oh yeah, we did do that. 
And then after two months of hanging out in Nepal, we made the jump over India and into Sri Lanka. We spent almost four months there. Mm -hmm. We rented a scooter mm -hmm. and decided to just do a road trip around the entire country. And we weren't doing YouTube yet. So these were pre-YouTube days. It was just us and our little phones. Yeah. And all we do is take some pictures. We put a few things up on Instagram, but that was the only way we were documenting this at the time. Uh, and sometimes we are like sad that we didn't do YouTube mm -hmm. when we were in Nepal and Sri Lanka because we have some just incredible memories from there. But it also just allowed us to really sit back and just like hang out and really lean into like this new travel life that we were developing and creating and learning about. So those memories were just for ourselves. So you're just gonna have to take our word for it that those were some magical months. They were awesome. But then as the world slowly started to open up a bit, we realized that we could actually start really traveling again a little bit quicker than we have been. So we booked a flight out of Sri Lanka and that really was the start of phase two of our travels. And we'll tell you more about that in a little bit. But for now, we've actually got to go find a shuttle or a bus or a taxi or something to take us to our accommodation, which is really cool. And we're going to show you around. Welcome to the Capsule Hotel locker room. I feel like I'm at the swimming pool. <laughs> Cool. It's like one of those like dream-inducing machines where they're gonna like, <laughs> put you in this capsule and study your dreams or something yeah. weird. I feel like we're gonna be put in like a, a stasis and frozen so that we can float through space for the next couple decades. Seriously. All right, let's give you guys a quick tour. So we already have one set of lights on, but there is a second one. Boom. Look at that. Let's turn off the ceiling light. I feel like it's like this is like the night light, you know, when you're trying to rest. Okay, so what we have on this like motherboard is what this looks like to me or of course the lights we've each got a usb port it looks like headphone jack there's two of them then there's a bunch of buttons and i i tried clicking them and i don't know what they do so we're just gonna leave that alone there is an option to change like the amount of air that's coming out of these guys so we can cool it off in here because it's actually quite toasty and then we've also got a power socket and there is a whole safe which i don't know how to open it yet but there's a whole safe <laughs> This is a reading light. So we each get a reading light. Oh. oh. They give us a table, I guess. Cool, we could like work in here. And then there's a whole stinking TV in this room. Oh. The newsman. <laughs> This capsule thing is super cool. It's really cool. I think we're gonna get an awesome sleep in this bed yeah, too. Yeah, the bed is so comfy and I just feel like I'm sleeping in a spaceship, so like that's cool. But we are exhausted, so we're gonna take the evening to rest and we will continue on with our story with you guys tomorrow. Good morning. We have just woken up from what was an absolutely epic sleep in our little like matrix hibernation pod cube thing. But now that we're rested, we can tell you a little bit more about phase two of our travels. Phase two of our travels was really defined by fast travel slash the start of YouTube. After spending four magical months in Sri Lanka, we left and went to New York City to get vaccinated mm -hmm. and also get our very first travel vlogging camera. After we got our camera, we went east again, all the way to the country of Georgia. And Georgia is where we filmed our very first travel vlog. We filmed in Tbilisi, Georgia. And if you see that, Maybe, maybe don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit cringy. It was super cringy. But if you really want to start from the beginning, that's okay. <laughs> Welcome to today's video. We're in Georgia. Uh, we're in the capital, Tbilisi. So Georgia was where we really started to explore YouTube and figure out how on earth to both film and travel at the same time. Which can be really challenging, mm -hmm. but we made it through Georgia. We went to Armenia, we got to Turkey, really ticking off some bucket list items like exploring Istanbul. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the Cappadocia hot air balloon ride. And we also got to see uh, the cotton castles of Pamukkale, which were just stunning. And then we made our way to Jordan. Jordan was phenomenal. We spent a month there. We did Wadi Rum, we did Petra, we did the Dead Sea. Jordan is probably at, like near the top of our list for all time favorite countries. We just had a blast. And from there we really started blitzing quite a few countries. So we quickly did Malta, Israel, Palestine, Egypt, 
and Mexico. Yeah, it was a really fast paced travel lifestyle for us for a little while, YouTube and also traveling. I think we hit, what, eight or nine countries in about four months. Yeah. So by the end of it, we were getting pretty tired and we were really looking for a place to like kind of settle down and relax. And we actually ended up going to a country that surprised a lot of people. But we'll tell you a bit more about that tomorrow morning when we're back at the airport. I think for now, we're gonna make the most of this day and get some work done. All right, good morning, guys. We're gonna let you in on the plan of the day. So right now, we are on our way to Cancun Airport. And then from there, we're gonna fly to Chicago before we make our 16-hour flight all the way to Delhi. The 16-hour flight isn't a big deal. What's a big deal is that we have only a two and a half hour layover in Chicago. So we thought, you know, two and a half hours should be enough. But it turns out <laughs> that the transfer process in Chicago is a lot more involved, involved <laughs> than we thought it would be. We have to deplane, pass immigration, pick up our bags, re-give our bags, recheck our bags after one. agricultural and uh, inspections. <laughs> then we have to take a train over to a different terminal, find our gate, and then hopefully we board along with our and bags. And go back to security ourselves. Oh, and security. It's, that. A, yeah. it's gonna be a mess. Visiten Cancún, sigan a Nicole y Miko. Bye bye. Guys, we just had like the greatest taxi driver to the airport. He was great. He was just like, are you guys YouTubers? <laughs> oh my God, is it Mr. Beast in the car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Him, definitely he was wonderful. David, thank you for making our morning drive wonderful. <laughs> it was great. So let's pick up our story from where we left you guys off yesterday. We were looking for a place to rest. It's December 2021. We've been on the road for like 10 months, starting to feel pretty tired. And so we decided what better place to take a break than all the way back home in Canada. But instead of telling our families, we actually decided to surprise them, which we thought would be a lot more fun. It was so epic. We just loved how it turned out. I can't believe we actually caught them off guard. We just like walked in on Christmas morning and just surprised the whole family. It was phenomenal and an absolute incredible way to spend our break. It was nice to see family and friends. We even went and stayed at a lodge in the Rocky Mountains, which was absolutely epic. This was probably the best way to recharge our batteries because we had a lot more traveling ahead of us. Before we knew it, our month in Canada was very quickly coming to a close. And just before we left, we were met with a really unfortunate surprise that completely changed our plans. And we will tell you more about that very soon because right now we've got to hop on this flight to Chicago and then really cross our fingers and toes that we actually make it on the plane to Thank you very much. Have a good flight. Bye -bye. I think I just said gracias for the last time. <laughs> I'm so sad about it. We thank you for choosing United. It has been our pleasure serving you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So as soon as with this seatbelt signs went off, we booked it up there. We went from row 25 to row nine in an instant. Now we're rushing to get to immigration. I've never seen Nicole walk this fast. <laughs> Are you making fun? <laughs> I think it's maybe for my power walk, but you know what? I trailed after my father all my young years. That man walks fast. Okay, we power walk like crazy, but we made it to the immigration line. I feel like it's the worst feeling ever though, to like work really hard to get somewhere and then just be in line. Okay, we cleared immigration. We got our bags. We're back in line to go through customs. Dropped off our bags. Now we just gotta like make our way through. Find the uh MTA? Oh yeah, welcome to Chicago, everybody. One of the trains just came up and we decided to just jump on it. We're not exactly sure if it's going the right way, but we figure it's a 50-50 chance. Boarding in 44 minutes. We're amazing. That was a record. That probably happened like all of one minute for you guys, but for mm. us, that was an intense hour. hour and 15? Yeah, so not too bad. But now, we're really hungry. We're gonna get some food because the next flight is gonna be 16 hours. Very long flight. All carry-on items must be stowed completely underneath the seat in front of you or in the overhead compartment above you. Okay, before we catch them, shut we will finish telling you guys about the very unfortunate surprise we caught just before we attempted to leave for South America, which was the third phase of this adventure. So literally the day before our flight to Buenos Aires, we got a positive PCR test result that came back. So instead of leaving on our flight the next day, we were delayed by two whole weeks and we just sat in my sister and her husband's basement and we got a lot of work done. The best thing we did was actually do a lot of planning because we didn't really know what we were gonna do in South America at that point. 
but we actually created a pretty good plan. We started off in Argentina, Buenos Aires, and had a blast there. We made our way down Argentina all the way to Ushuaia, saw some beautiful penguins, and then we crossed over to Chile and did the Patagonia O Trek, which is probably one of our favorite adventures thus far. Then we headed further north to Bolivia, where we got to see the incredible salt flats, and then over to Ecuador, where we got to see the Amazon jungle, and then uh, we went south again to Peru, and of course that was absolutely incredible. Got to see Machu Picchu and Huacachina and so many cool things in Peru. And then Colombia, where we just were. A lot of you guys have joined us in this trip in South America, so we won't go into it in too much detail. But South America is where we made some of our most favorite travel memories and something we will never forget. We will definitely be going back one day. There's so much more to see. If anything, just to work on our Spanish a little bit more. And see Brazil. <laughs> And that somehow already takes us into what is quickly becoming the fourth phase of our travels, which is India, which we are hopefully going to be in in like another 13 hours or something. It's going to be 16 hours for us, but probably seconds for you. But I want you guys to come with us and experience our first impressions of India because this phase four is going to be completely different than what we've been seeing in the past few phases. Yeah, and although we are really going to miss South America and the cool like experiences and culture and language that it brings, we're super stoked for phase four, which begins with India and ends I have no idea where. On behalf of United Airlines and your entire flight crew, especially Chicago-based flight attendants, it certainly has been our pleasure. Have a wonderful stay here in Delhi, wherever your final destination may take you. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. We have finally made it. We are finally in India, which means phase four of traveling can begin. We've always wanted to come to India. Yeah. It's been on our list for so long, and we got so close last time mm -hmm. when we were in Nepal and Sri Lanka, but now we are finally here. We've heard so much about the culture, and we heard it could be a bit of a big culture shock, but... Yeah. I think we're ready for it. I hope we're ready for it. All right, guys, we're officially outside. We're in India. It's scorching and it's like almost midnight, yeah. but I think that's all we have for today. Yeah, thanks for coming along and listening to our story and coming along for our travel day. We will catch you in the next video for first impressions of India. Thanks for watching.